Hello everyone, how are you all doing? I'm really exhausted. My sister moved in with me and yeah, we've been moving things around. I'm mostly tired, but I'm also really sad. The thing is, I finally finished Radio Silence and I know, I know it took me quite a long time to finish, but here I am again to express my opinion about it. So yeah, let's, let's get started with that. So, Am I going to read what Goodreads says about this book? No, I will not. Actually, I figured it would be better if I just explain it myself for some reason. Also, if you haven't read the book yet and you don't want to spoil yourself, I recommend you watch this video after reading the book. It'll make much more sense for you, but if you don't care, I won't stop you. You do you, I guess. So, Radio Silence is the second book that Alice Osman published, and yes, I'm talking about another Alice Osman book. Leave me alone, mom, this is not a face. She published it in 2016 and it broke me. This book goes a couple of years after the events that happen in Solitaire and it's narrated by one of our main characters, Frances, who is 17 slash 18 years old and currently attending high school at a place called the Academy, which is the place where all the Hick students moved to after it got burned by a mysterious prankster. I don't know if you've heard about them. Frances is the head girl of the Academy. She's a straight A student whose only goal is to get into Cambridge to study English literature. But that's not the real Frances. Francis. That's only school Francis. The real Francis is actually known in Tumblr as Toulouse. She loves posting her drawings and is obsessed with a not so popular YouTube channel called Universe City which is some sort of podcast, kind of like The Two Princes, highly recommend, and it basically tells the story of the mysterious radio, the main character of the podcast who seems to be trapped in this place called the Universe City, and who also desperately wants someone to save them. But while they wait for that to finally happen, they spend their days solving mysteries and stuff like that, you know? Now, and this is an important thing to remember, the person who makes these videos is called the creator and nobody knows who they are. But continuing with the main story, Story. Everything changes in Frances' life when she receives an email from the creator telling her and by her I mean Toulouse how much they love her drawings and they actually want Frances to make the art for the YouTube channel. Now, the same day this happens, Frances decides to go with her friends to a club and after a not so unfortunate turn of events, Frances ends up helping a quiet and shy guy called Alet Last who is really really drunk and he's not really thinking about what he's doing and that's why he ends up telling Francis that he's actually the creator. So after some chatting here and there and helping Francis with her math homework a couple of days after the party, I forgot to mention this, Aled and Francis are actually neighbors. Anyway, after all these things happen, Francis ends up confessing to Aled that she's actually Toulouse. What an amazing and strange turn of events this is. As they say in my country, El Mundo es un panuelo. And that's pretty much how they end up working together for University. University? Univer? University? Anyway, by doing this together, an amazing and beautiful friendship begins. But when Alex's identity as the creator is uncovered, everything in his and Francis' life starts to get really, really complicated. And we all wonder how everything will be fixed. It can't be fixed at all. Now, of course, I won't be explaining all the things that happen in this book, but I think this is a reasonable amount of information for you to understand the plot. Now, in this book, we'll see Francis struggles to find who she really is, her problems with academic achievement, and in brief her journey to get to know herself and what she really wants. As well as we'll get to know about Alet's life, his struggles with mental health, family issues, and a lot more. So this book, I can't even begin to explain how much I loved it. I have to admit I didn't think I would like it that much, but I was completely wrong. The story was amazing as always, Alice is an amazing writer and they never fail to surprise me. The way they portray abusive parent, academic pressure, fandoms, and mental health struggles was simply so accurate. And by the way, I'll leave here all the trigger warnings before you continue with this video or read the book if you haven't. But as I was saying, the dialogues in this book were really natural and all the events that happened have some sort of continuity and I really appreciate that. I think it is one of the first times where I didn't get lost while reading a book. I do have to say, as you can see, I struggled a lot with finishing this book 
book, not only because I didn't have time, but also because it was extremely triggering. All the scenes were so well written that I actually had to stop for like hours to process the things that were happening, feel okay about it and continue reading. But anyway, I truly enjoyed getting to know more about Alex's character and story. He's one of my favorite characters and I was really surprised about his life story. I truly couldn't believe he had a twin sister. And all the horrible things that his mother did to him, I was just so sad. If I could, I would have taken Aled to my house, give him food, support and, I don't know, basic shit that he might need. And then, as usual, I would have taken him to therapy. But if I start naming all the characters in this book that I would have taken to therapy, I will need a van instead of a car. Maybe a bus, like the Therapy Express, the Mental Health Express? The Depressed Express? The Depressed Express it is. But as I was saying, Aled is such a complicated character to understand. He's really quiet and he never really expresses the way he truly feels. It was interesting to see how he wants to keep all the problematic things about his life away from Francis. He wanted to enjoy the little moments that he had to be his true self. And that's also why University was so important to him. And the fact that Carrie was every Friday all alone. And the fact that Aled kept on writing her letters after she ran away from home. That was one of the things that made me cry the most while reading this book. Although this book is mainly about Francis' story, I think it was also about Francis trying to figure out Aled. At first, we get little to no information about him, but as the story continues, we got to know more about his past, his current relationship with Daniel, mentioning volume 3? I guess his family, how much he's actually struggling with mental health, the horrible things that his mother has done. I'm glad that Aled was able to overcome most of these problems in the end. And I truly think Alice did an excellent work with his character. I found myself happy, sad, extremely anxious and worried about Aled's well-being. And knowing that he was finally happy in the end was extremely heartwarming for me. Now, I know Aled is my favorite character, but I would like to talk a bit more about our actual protagonist, Francis. The way this book portrayed the pressure that comes with being a straight A student was amazing. I used to be a straight A student myself. I was at the top of my class and all. Therefore, reading about Francis' experience was extremely relatable, I would say. How she feels like she has no opportunity to be a normal teenager, the constant fear of failing, losing her, everything about it was uncomfortably accurate for me. <laughs> and when she found out that she didn't get into Cambridge, I've been there, buddy. I mean, I didn't try to go to Cambridge, of course, but I did fail a really important exam that was supposed to define my whole college future. And I went through the same stages that Francis did. You know, feeling stupid and disappointed, realizing that all the effort that you put in your future was for nothing and now everyone feels pity for you. All of it was exactly the same that it actually scared me a little. And this was one of the moments where I had to stop reading for a bit, take my time and then continue because it, it, it really hit me, you know? And I'm mentioning all of this because I like that in the end college wasn't the goal. This book teaches you a lot of things and one of them is that college isn't always your future. Not all of us are made for it and it doesn't define you and sometimes doing things differently can lead you to a much better place. What is important is to take care of yourself and do what you enjoy. God, this turned into a therapy session for me but really this book did make me feel better about quitting college. Maybe that's why I love this so much. But anyway, another thing that I liked was Daniel's character. At first I thought he was an asshole and he kind of is, but after he gets to talk with Francis about his relationship with Aled and how insecure he really is because he thinks Aled is only with him because he's comfortable and he doesn't really like him that much. And oh god, I want to hug Daniel so bad. Hop on on the Depressed Express, my boy. And speaking of Daniel, I love how this book portrayed friendship. We see how Aled and Francis become friends and how they slowly start getting more comfortable with each other, the way they bond over making university together and stuff, as well as seeing how Francis and Daniel kind of hate each other at first, but as time passes they share some moments where they get to talk about their problems and they start getting along and in the end they help Aled together. They bond over their love for Aled. Oh my god, that's so cheesy and I love it. Also, shout out to Rain. I loved her. She was 
one of my favorite characters she was always willing to help Francis and she was also kind of the only one of Francis friends who wanted to get to know the real her and yeah that's pretty much it I just really like this character but continuing with the plot this book was extremely sad I cry so many times with this book it's actually embarrassing reading about Alet's situation with his mom was extremely hard for me and when I was reading what she did to Alet's dog I think I stood there for probably more than five minutes just processing what was happening like all of these emotions were there and it was just like ah and I will say I think the train scene in the end when everyone is trying to stop Aled from going with his mom it was a bit dramatic and I think it was unnecessary it gave me unnecessary stress and anxiety when I was reading I was like come on everyone just let Aled be happy please but although this book was really sad, I also laughed so many times. All the funny titles for the different chapters, the humor in the book is a little dark, but it was my kind of humor, you know, so I really enjoyed it. Both Radio Silence and I Was Born For This made me extremely scared of fandoms. All the hate and threats that Alex received after people find out who he was and after he announced that he was going to stop making Universe City, those things were really scary to read. Also, I want to quickly mention the LGBTQ plus representation in this book. It's not something truly relevant to the story, but I wanted to mention this particular scene. The part when Aled finally opens up to Daniel about his feelings and how he truly identifies was so, so wholesome. And I think Alice did a really good job explaining what demisexuality is. And this is actually the first book slash like piece of media that I see with demisexual representation. And I thought that was worth mentioning, so yeah, go Alice, I guess. Overall, Radio Silence is an excellent book. I very much enjoyed it, as you can see. And if you're around the ages of 17 slash 19 and you like the coming of age, really sad but heartwarming stories. Also, if you're not feeling really happy about going to college and you want to feel understood, go and read this book right now. It, it will really help you. And I talk from my own experience here. It was extremely helpful. It made me feel a lot better about myself. Also, as I said in my previous video, if you like queer representation, Alice's books are always a good choice. Anyway, I won't be covering all the things that I want to talk about without making a video longer than 20 minutes, so I think I will finish it here. But I invite you to comment your opinion about this book. I would actually love to talk about this story with someone that isn't myself, so feel free to express how you felt about Radio Silence in the comments. Also, if you want, you can follow me on my social media. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. That is, if I don't suffer another concussion or have my sister moving with me or whatever happens in my life. So yeah, bye!